in Jesus' name. Thank you for all of you who are here tonight. Thank you, Reverend Allen. Thank you, Sister Allen, for coming tonight. All the way from Frankston, Texas. We love you guys so much. Thank you for being here with us. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Love them Frankston Indians, too. They're all right. They're all right. And all the rest of you, thank you so much. Is Facebook running, Royston? Thank you guys for checking us out tonight by Facebook. I hope you enjoy service uh, right there where you're at. God bless you all so very richly as we begin our revival service tonight.
Sing that just a little bit more.
Step into that expectation a little bit, amen. Come on. If all you ever do is sit there and say, man, that was good. Look at that over there. That's amazing. But you never go there and put your hand on it and pick it up. It'll never be yours. And God is saying to you tonight that there's a place where you can step into something. Brand new. Amen. Fresh manna from heaven. That's, that's right for you. Perfect for you. Amen. Tonight. And all you have to do is just either raise that hand Maybe move to that aisle, come down front and worship. Whatever it may be, whatever that, that move of, of, of boldness in your life is, that move of the Spirit is in your life, let that be what you do tonight. Amen? There's nobody in this room judging you. Not one person. You came here so God could speak to your heart and your life. Amen? So let Him do that tonight. Let Him speak to you. And whatever it is that God says is yours, it's yours. Amen? Step into that thing. Move into that thing in Jesus' name and let Him bless your life. Hallelujah. So nobody's holding back tonight. Amen. Let's give Jesus all we got. Amen. Because I promise you He's going to give you all that He has in return. Hallelujah, Jesus. I might even baptize somebody tonight. Amen. Got water ready for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's worship some more. Come on. Let's worship the Lord some more tonight.
hasta el cielo por salvar me veniste a rescatar mi transgresión tu perdonaste nada nos separará majestoso su nombre Majestoso su nombre es el nombre de Jesús. Majestoso su nombre es nadie se cual. Majestoso su nombre es no hay otro nombre. Majestoso su nombre es no hay otro could not hold you. Death could not hold you. The fields are before you. You silence the voice of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of you glory. For you are raised to life again.
heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no equal now in forever God you reign yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a powerful name it is nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name time to worship him in your own words from your heart pray out loud do what you've got to do if it's just singing out oh's and who's he loves that
As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. provides 
He protects. He watches you run this race of life, and he runs with you around the track, and he cheers you on, and he said, go, my son, go, my daughter. You're making me smile, you're making me proud. I love you, love you, love you. all I wanted <laughs> so I sold my only son He's my so I could have multiplied millions of the same kind of one come on now lift your head up Let it dawn upon your heart. There are no wounds my love cannot heal. There are no wounds that my heaven cannot heal. But it's today's today the day. That I hear. Thank you, Father. You're my Father. You're my Father. You're my Father. You're my Father. I'm strong with my father. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I am whole with my father. Healed with my father. I have purpose with my father. Yes. Oh, my life, it stands, it counts. My father makes it. He makes my life. He makes me strong. He leads me on yes, he does, yes, on the path of glory, on the path of victory. He's my dad. He's my father. He's my papa. He's my poppy. He's my Abba. Father. Oh, Father, we thank you. <laughs> we love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. We adore you, Lord. There's no one above you, Lord. There's no one before you, Lord. You are the best. You're the ultimate. You're the greatest. <laughs> oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You're such a perfect, loving Father. You love us in pure and perfect love. Lord, we just lift our hands to you without any wrath or doubting that you're our Father. And we just say thank you. All the glory to you. Jesus, you are the way and the truth and the life. And you are the way to the Father. And that's your ultimate purpose. That's your ultimate goal. You've brought us home. We're home. We have a home with our Father. Oh, 
Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us your relationship as a son with the Father. Yes. Go ahead. I am desperate for a touch. <laughs> Throw my fears into the wind. 
about the gift of diverse tongues and the interpretation of diverse tongues and as this brother was speaking out in tongues I heard I heard these words this trans this interpretation he, he said I will take you into the encounter of my love and it will so undo your heart it will ruin you in a beautiful way and your heart will begin to cry with my heart. And my heart will begin to cry within you for those who are without me, who don't know me. And you will make their cry for them. You will stand in the gap. And you will take their hand and you'll take my hand and you will bring us together. And because you released that cry, because you released the cry of my heart from your heart it will be heard in heaven and heaven shall transcend into the earth and I shall move heaven and earth and that one shall be rescued that one that you cried their cry for them that cry shall be answered and if we're in this way many many more sons shall come into my glory so don't back away from the cry of intercession, the cry of the Spirit, the cry. Continue to go into the intimate, deep place with me and enjoy my love. Let me fill you with my love until you cannot take it anymore. Be overwhelmed in my love. It's okay. That's actually the way I designed it to be. For you to be totally wrecked, totally ruined, totally overwhelmed. Let my love come crashing in for you and upon you. It shall transform you and make you whole. And you shall lose sight of yourself. And those only you will see are the lost that don't know me as Father yet. But they shall. For it's my desire that my heart be able to cry within many here. 
For my son, my only son, the Lord Jesus Christ is forever at my right hand making intercession. But that cry needs to transcend heaven into the earth and that cry needs to be made in the earth. And then it makes it legal, it makes it possible for me to enter into that life because you cried for them. Lord, overwhelm us and fill us with love and get us to that place, Lord, that we cannot take it that people are not experiencing you and knowing you as we are, Lord. Bring us to that place that we are broken by love, that we are, are Lord, we are the place where this world has no attraction no attachment we've lost all side of it and our eyes are only upon you i thank you lord for tonight for visiting us lord for lifting us up lord for doing a work in our hearts by your love that only you can do lord i pray that no one would leave this place the same but everyone would be changed transformed Marked by your love and your, your kindness, your power. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Where there's a greater glory that, of my tangible presence that you have not seen or known here to before, but you shall know. And I offer that tonight. I offer that new beginning that new level for it is my great desire it makes me happy it makes me happy to bring my sons and daughters into the fullness of my spirit into the fullness of me that I have paid for that I have redeemed you into And it shall be glorious, and it shall be grand, and it shall be great, and it shall be as the days of heaven upon the earth. And there'll be times when you just got to pinch yourself and you say, is this really happening? Is it, is, am I in a dream? I didn't know, I didn't ever know it could be this beautiful, this wonderful. Oh, but it is, for I'm here. not walk according to the course and the power of the air and the God of this world. You'll not walk according to the flesh, but you'll walk in unison and in sync with my spirit. And it'll be glorious and you'll be a great blessing to many. And I will communicate with you the many needs of others and you'll know and you'll speak and you'll minister in many places. And bodies will be healed and minds will be set free. Demons shall leave and many shall be rescued and brought home to the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're so glad you're here, Lord. We're so glad you're here, Lord. We're happy that you're here. Thank you for being here, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, if you want to sit down just for a moment, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And if you wouldn't mind turning the lights on for a moment, hallelujah. I love to have the lights on, especially at night services. Very important. I like to see the Holy Spirit touching people and moving upon people. You know, the Bible, when Jesus taught about the Holy Spirit, he, he used natural examples. He said the Holy Spirit's like wind. You know, he said he's like water. He's like a river. You know, you can't, you can't see the wind. But you can always see the effects of the wind. You can see it bend the trees. You can see it ruffle the leaves. You can, you can see the wind blow a piece of paper or a can down the street. And you can see the Holy Spirit touch people. You can see his effects. Amen. And you know, a river, it's, it's, it's got a lot of different directions. It's got, it, sometimes it's wild and rushing and fast and loud. Sometimes it's deep and quiet and there's many things in between. 
And we just have to learn to flow with that river, whatever Holy Spirit wants to be, and pick up on that unction and pick up on that inspiration of the Spirit. And God, take us in to great things, deeper things, glorious things. Thank you, Lord. And he's teaching us by his Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a wonderful, sweet, sweet presence of the Lord in this place tonight. It's sweet tonight. So sweet. Thank you, Lord. And uh, the Lord, um, before I get into word, I'll, I'll forget it if I don't get into word, but he does want to heal a few people. He, he just emphasized a few things to me while, while I was standing over there that he, that he wants to heal. And there's somebody you need, you need healing in your throat. I don't know what it is. You might have a tumor in your throat or, or just maybe there may be some damage to the throat. I don't know. It could just be a sore throat. I don't know what it is. But if you need healing in your throat, would you raise your hand? Okay, this gentleman right here and this lady right here. I'm going to pray for everybody in just one moment. This gentleman back here. Amen. Could be the lymph nodes. You could have lymphoma. Could be anything. Could be a, a tumor. But whatever it is, I guarantee you the Lord's going to heal it tonight because he, he, he said he was. And then uh, there's someone that, um, you know, you have this pain where your big toe is and then kind of into the inside of your foot. And I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's gout, la gota, or what it is, but, but, or if it's damaged from something. You've got nerve damage in the foot. Could be a, you could have damage in your disc in your lower back, but it manifests in your toe. This, Pastor Brad and this, this gentleman here. This brother here, are you a pastor, brother? Okay. And, and then um, someone in your ear, I, I, I have the sense it's maybe your eardrum. I don't know if you have a hole in your eardrum or, or if you just have a blockage in your ear, like your hearing's blocked or it's just like it's tapado or, or un zumbido or algo en tu oído, pero it's it, there's something wrong with the ear and that could be deafness could be completely deaf in one of your ears anybody you need healing in one of the ears you need something needs to be like removed or unblocked it's or, or just like a molest, molestation in the ear anyone Lord heal that ear okay alright oh okay yes ma'am yes ma'am alright and then scoliosis a uh, curvature of the spine that your t spine is twisted or that you may have been you know that's usually you're born with that but you, but your 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 spine doesn't have the normal curvature and that causes problems and and from time to time you have some really back trouble anybody you you need that you, you, scoliosis your the spine is not normal okay and and then uh, just pain and pressure over the heart could be angina, could be uh, heart disease, it just, it just could be this stress. But anything to do with the heart or the lung in that area, just there's this pain and pressure in that area. Hallelujah. And then um, also in the arch of the foot, maybe the plantar facis, or, or uh, you have pain in your foot, in, in more in the arch area of your foot, not the toe, but the arch of the foot. Anyone here with that? This young man here, this young man here, okay. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You know, God loves you so much, he's interested in the toenail, the heel of the toenail on your little toe. He, he takes as much joy in that as healing somebody with terminal cancer or somebody with paralysis. It's all the same to him. He doesn't classify it. He, it's, it's just he paid to heal it all. He bore every sickness and every disease that we might be healed. Amen. He paid the price. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so if any of those words of knowledge apply to you, like we said last night, when the word of knowledge comes, that's a gift of the Holy Spirit. But it brings the gift of healing. And the healing's a gift. It's just a gift. It doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with your faith or my faith. You, you, you can have zero faith in the Lord to heal you because it's a gift. We can initiate healing by our own faith, just believing God, believing his promises in his word for healing and stand on the word and just receive our healing and that we initiate it with our faith but when God moves through the gifts of the Holy Spirit he's the one initiating it. he's the one doing it he, he comes and does it he, he takes great joy in doing that 
So if any of those words of knowledge apply to you, would you just stand to your feet just right now? And tonight what I want to do, if everyone see these people that are standing, I want you to put your hands, uh, some of you put your hands on each one. Put, just everybody come, Aaron, and everybody help me. Come around. It, we need, I want two or three people on each person. If you need healing, if, or excuse me, if, if, excuse me, if one of those words apply to you, raise your hand so they can see you. Raise your hand up. Okay, pastor here. And, all right, everybody got hands on them. Anybody you don't have hands yet on you, okay? All right. All right. Thank you, Lord. You got hands on her. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for these gifts of healing. We thank you for these miracles and these signs and these wonders. We thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus that you are healing the throat. Any, anything that's destroyed in the lining of the throat, any tumor, anything wrong in the throat, in the lymph nodes, we thank you that it's healed, whether it's a big thing or a little thing in our mind. We thank you right now, Lord, for healing the toe, for healing that, that gout, for healing that part of the foot. We thank you, Lord, for restoring that ear in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, right now, spine, line up. Espalda se normal en el nombre de Jesucristo. Lignate in the nombre de Cristo. We thank you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. All pain, all pressure off of the heart. All heart disease be healed. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Also, thank you for healing in the back, in the shoulder blade area. Thank you for healing that tonight as well, Lord. Just receive that right now. Pain in your back, in the shoulder blade area. Receive that healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know if someone has a family member that's in the, heart, in the hospital with congestive heart failure or if you had congestive heart failure and there was, but you came out of it, you survived it, but there's some residual damage. The Lord is healing something in, in the area of either a family member or, or something to do with congestive heart failure. With heart failure, does that maybe happen and then you, you just haven't been strong or, you, or something since then? Anybody, does that have anything to do with any? Okay, you went through that. Right now, Aaron, put your hands on her. Right now, Lord, 100% recovery, 100% strength back, 100% normal, Lord. In the powerful and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, right now, heart made new. Hallelujah. Heart made new. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Someone here that you've been, you, you, you have a problem with one of your teeth or more of your teeth, you uh, maybe have an abscess or an infection in your tooth, you really need that tooth to be extracted or you need a root canal. The Lord, is there somebody you need that? The Lord's healing that right now. Right now, He's going, He touches your teeth right down to the roots. New, a new tooth. Healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Right now, right now. Thank you, Lord. You're not only a perfect physician, you're a perfect dentist, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You have a sinus passage that's closed and blocked. A lot of pressure. Sinus, you have a problem. You just On one side, it's like that sinus passage is always blocked. Anybody here? Can't breathe through it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ha! <laughs> Ah, right now in Jesus name in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Father <laughs> we love you hallelujah such a good healer you're such a good healer Lord you're amazing we honor you Lord we thank you for what you're doing right now we thank you for each person that you've healed amen hallelujah thank you Lord if you if you could say to me that you feel a significant change in your body or if you're 80 to 100 percent better raise your hand and wave it at me wow look at that my goodness Woo. that's awesome amen amen if if you don't have a complete manifestation it'll manifest either before you leave tonight sometimes it manifests when people wake up the next day but god's healing power has gone into your body and it's working in there mightily like a remedy, just like taking a medicine or a therapy, it's in there working. You received it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
Just do what you couldn't do before. Move your body. Use that part of your body. Keep moving it and checking it out. And just thank you. Just keep thanking him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Aaron, you have any words of knowledge for healing tonight? Tailbone. Coxus. You need healing in your in your tailbone and in, to coxus. Right? This bone, way down your tailbone. Anybody you need a healing in your tailbone. That's painful if you've broken your tailbone. Amen. Anyone here? We had a lady one time, she needed surgery on her tailbone and, and this like was over in Canton last year and word came and I mean Lord totally healed her, went back to the doctor. Perfect. Perfect. He said, he said, this is better than any surgery could have ever done. It's like, amen. amen. If you need healing in your tailbone, raise your hand. If you're watching, yeah, we got people watching by internet. If you're at home and you need healing in your tailbone, if you're watching on the internet right now, in the name of Jesus, the power of God comes right into that room where you're watching. Lord touches you in your tailbone. We say, tailbone, be healed. In Jesus' name. Just receive that gift in Jesus' name. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Anyone else have any words of knowledge? Anyone else? Lord, Lord gave you something. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You can, you can uh, return to your seat. And... Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, anything can happen in these meetings. <laughs> Amen. And will happen. Amen. But you know, the Lord, he, he confirms his word with miracle signs and wonders. He watches over his word to perform it. Anything you preach, he will manifest it. If people will believe it and receive it, it will happen. Amen? And so sometimes he'll give a message, and that message will actually bring the manifestation of his spirit. Bring that into reality. It'll actually be tangible. It'll, you'll... you'll Experience the very thing that's been preached, Amen. and I believe I believe with all my heart that's what this tonight's about. Because I really feel so strong that He wanted me to talk about His love for us. He He wants me to just share about His love for you. We talk much about our love for God. And we talk much about allowing the love of God to dominate us towards others so that we love others with God's love. But see, you can't give away what you haven't received. And so he wants you to receive his love tonight. He wants you not only to hear it and to know about it, he wants you to experience it. He wants it to be yours. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3, great scripture, one of my very favorite scriptures. Hallelujah. It says this, it says, The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love, and with my loving kindness I have drawn you. Yes, the Lord of old has appeared to me, saying, I just love that part right there, the Lord of old, the ancient of days, the I am that I am, not the I was or the I will be, but the I am, the very present help in the time of trouble, the God of the now, the right now God. Today's the day of salvation. Now's the accepted time. He's the God of now. Here with us, the Lord of old. The I am that I am, the one that has always been and always will be, who was and is and is to come, him. Hallelujah. He is speaking to us tonight. He's appearing to us tonight. Hallelujah. The one that is unchangeable, immutable. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. See, God can't change. We live in a world that everything is changing, man, and it's changing so fast, you know. I've got problems. My phone needs to be updated right now and on my iPad. And, you know, and I just can't stand that. I don't like to change. And about the time you get learn how to use Facebook, then they come up with Instagram. By the time you get hold of Instagram, now it's TikTok. And you get hold of TikTok now, or now it's TikTok. Because everything's changing. Hallelujah. Will not change. It cannot change. And the Bible says that his eyes are continually. Amen. It says the Spirit of God is searching to and fro throughout all the earth, looking for someone that he might show himself strong on their behalf. Amen. 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 It says, with God there's no very or shadow of turning, that he's the giver of perfect gift. What does that mean? You know, if see, God doesn't change his position of love towards you. that and you can't change that he's decided to do that he's he's promised that and he says that with him there's no variable or shadow of turning in other words variables are things that are up and down they're changing they're they're you know they're not constant God is constant his love is constant you can't alter it amen and with him there's no shadow of turning see here I can change my position and cast my shadow. I can turn my shadow. But God, his shadow never turns. Why? Because his eyes are always upon the righteous. He's always looking at you with love, with desire to bless, desire to help, desire to show mercy, desire. He just, he, he is forever wanting to satisfy The Lord is, he's compassionate, the word says in, in, in Psalms. I, I think that's 48. And, and he, he's not sympathetic, but he's compassionate. See, sympathy will identify with somebody's situation and say, man, I hate to see that. That, that just breaks my heart. And I feel an emotion. I feel, uh, you know, it grieves me that, that, that they're suffering that. It, it, it hurts me that they're suffering like that, that they're in that pain or that sickness or in that pro- mental or emotional suffering. And I feel bad for them. And, and it, it produces an emotion within you, but it doesn't change the situation. Compassion comes and ministers to that. Yes. See, Compassion comes in action. The Bible says that when Jesus came, that he looked over the people and he was moved with compassion. For they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were scattered and alone. And, you know, the devil was just just having a heyday in their life, just running roughshod over them. And something about that, right? He changed that. He went to the cross and changed all of that. See, by accident that we're here. It's not by coincidence that we're here. You know, really and honestly, before we were ever born, God planned tonight for us. He looked on his calendar and he said, they're going to be there and I'm going to meet them there and I'm going to touch them again. I'm going to help them again. I'm going to heal them again. I'm going to encourage them again. I'm going to lift them up. I'm going to transform them. Yes, amen. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. See, Thank you. the Lord of old, the one that can't change, he's the one that said this. This will never change. He says, listen to what cannot change, what he'll never change. He says, I have loved you. I have loved you. 
I love you. I do love you. I will love you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Everlasting love. Everlasting love. What does that mean? That means even when you didn't know him, and you may be here tonight and you don't know him, he loves you. He loved you when you didn't know him. And his love long that he in his love long for you to loved you when you were a baby. He loved you when you loves you. He loves you when you're in your twenties. He loves you when you're in your thirties. He loves you when you're single. He loves you when you're married. Don't have kids, and he loves you when you do have kids, and he loves you when you have grandkids and great grandkids. He loves you in your fifties and in your sixties and in your seventies and in your eighties. And if you make it up to ninety, he's uh, if you become a centennial, he's loving you. He loves you for his love is everlasting. And then you just get to just go home to where that love is totally unhindered. You just get to. Step out of this body and step into that place where inhibitions hindering his love and experience his love forever. Heaven is heaven because not of streets of gold or pearl mansion there. Heaven is heaven because the heavenly one's there. Love himself is there. Love himself is there. And he's here tonight, too. See? And so, and then he says, with my loving compassion, I have drawn you. With my loving compassion, my loving compassion, I have drawn you. That doesn't translate real well in Spanish, but it's, it's like this. It's kind of like, como... La bondad de mi amor, with the abundance of my love, with the kindness of my love, I have drawn you. See, love draws. Love draws. God draws us with love. See, the Bible says in First John chapter four, verse sixteen. It's it says this. It says that God is love. You know, I am. Um, I'm very Pentecostal. I can roll on the floor with the best, run around the room, dance, shout, all of that. And I love all of that. And I love God's power. I love to see miracles. I love to see healings. I love to, the gifts of the Spirit and the power gifts and all of that. But, but see, we have made a great to-do about God's power. But nowhere in the Bible does it say that God is power. But in 1 John 4, 16, it says, God is love. And that is the key to his power. When you start experiencing his love, you start experiencing his power. And anytime God moves with his great power, it's just a demonstration of his love. You know, a healing from God, a touch from God. A blessing from God. It's just a token of his love. You know, when I married Julie, when we were both 16, I, I, I worked, saved a little money as fast as I could, and I, I bought a very inexpensive ring. And I gave it to her. And that was a demonstration of my love. That was a token of my love, but that wasn't my love. It was just a way to communicate my love. And he... The Lord, but I wanted to, you understand, I wanted to communicate my love and commitment to her. And so everything that the Lord does, it's a token of his love. It's another, it's another symbol. It's another communication of his love. And we need to allow him to do much, to bless much, to heal much, to lift us up much. We need, it, it, see, that's what gratifies his heart. How do I know that? Because I'm a dad. I've got five, I've got four biological kids and one that's that's a daughter that's a, a niece and i've got eight grandchildren how many reverend jimmy do you have now y'all have how many grandkids y'all have now eight or nine greats wow what a heritage you know 
And <clears throat> there's nothing that gratifies my heart like to get to do something for one of my kids or my grandkids, to get to touch them, to get to hold them, to get to buy them something, to get to teach them something. That, that's what my heart wants. And nothing makes me happier than to get to spend some time with my children or my grandchildren. And I can tell you this, as a missionary living in different mission fields, I've never suffered anything. I've, I don't have any hard luck stories to tell you, financially or any otherwise. The only sacrifice that we've made is just to be away from our family, be away from our children and grandchildren at times. But I tell you what, when I, uh, when I come, I, I just was with my four oldest grandsons Saturday. And oh, I was so excited on the airplane coming in to see those guys and just to be with them and just to kind of find out what, what would make them feel loved and and, you know, the, the third one, it's in the middle. You know, sometimes the middle kids, they get overlooked, you know. And um, mom and dad, you know, they're in the wholesale business, you know. They, you got four boys that are two years apart. You're in the wholesale business. You include them on everything. But, see, I'm in the retail business as a granddad, so I get to make each one feel special. So it was the third one's birthday, and his favorite thing to eat, he had it one time, and he loved it, and he, is swordfish. And lo and behold, I went to this grocery store, and they had fresh swordfish. They just flown it in Friday, and I bought that. And I went ahead and bought enough for all of them, and I just cooked that for them, and I made them a big pot of seafood gumbo, and and then spent the day cooking together and ate that together. And and that third one, see, I took him with me. We went to the store. We did this. We did that because he needs that quality one-on-one -on -one time. See, God is love. There was a guy named, um, his, his name was Chapman. He wrote a book a long time ago. It's a great book. It's a great book for marriage. It's a great book for raising kids. It's called The Five Languages of Love. And he said that basically everybody's got receive love or give love. And the way you give love, it may not be the way you receive love. And he said one way, one really common way that people either receive love or give love is through words of affirmation, words of encouragement, positive words. Another way that people either give love or receive love is through physical touch. And then another way that people give love or receive love is through quality time. And then another way that, that people receive love or give love is through acts of kindness or acts of service. And uh, did I cut from all the seed? And the other one is gifts, giving people gifts or receiving gifts. And, you know, usually, like me, my, the way I like to love people, if I love you, I'll give you something. Or I'll encourage you. I'll, I'll give you encouragement. And, and the way I receive it is physical touch and words of encouragement. And I, this one grandson, though, with him, because he's in the middle, see, he, he's not at the top. He's not, a, he's not son number one, and he's not baby son. He's son number three. He feels like he gets looked over a little bit, and that's kind of common. So it's quality time. And so nothing, I'll tell you what, I, I, he was, you know, he, let's see, he's he just 13th birthday. It's his 13th birthday. So, you know, I took him with me, and he was kind of, Beat up a little bit, you know. You got two older brothers and one younger brother. <laughs> you know how that is. And so I just watched him as the day went by as we spent time together, just he and I. He just brightened up, brightened up, brightened up, blossom, blossom, blossom. And he was a totally different kid by the end of the day just because that, that love tank got filled up. Well, see, the Bible says that if we, being carnal, know how to give good gifts to our children, if we fathers are carnal and we know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give good, good gifts to His children? Amen? And I'll guarantee you this, God knows your love language. See? And so God will love you the way you need to be loved. 
And you may not think that anybody knows you, anybody sees you. But I'm going to tell you something. You've got God's full attention. His, you have his full attention. He is focusing on you, and he wants you to know that, and he wants you to experience that quality time with him. He wants to touch you in a way that will carry over into your life. You know, church, thank you, Father. Yes, sir, I will. Church ought to be a corporate encounter that then leads to daily encounters. In other words, we come in together and through, the, through this getting together and God's presence, we experience God together and then that causes a chain reaction of whether we start having individual encounters with him. Yes, sir, I will. Let me, re- let me, let me read this scripture to you. Psalm 63, verse 2 and 3 says, So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your glory and your power because your loving kindness is better than life and your faithfulness every night. He's, excuse me, uh, I'm sorry, I, I got off on another one. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. See, that's David. He said, Lord, I, I came to your sanctuary. Oh, if we would get this in our heart, if we would come expecting like this. He said, I came, Lord, I came looking, searching, seeking your glory and your power. Because, how does, how does David know he's going to experience God's glory? Which, you know what the word glory means there? It's God's manifest presence. He said, I came to experience your manifest presence and your power because your loving kindness is better than life. I know you love me. I know how kind you are, how loving you are. So I know that when I come, when I come, that I shall experience that. In other words, it's his love for you that gives you the confidence to have great faith, to appropriate every blessing, every promise, to take hold of God and to know him as your father and to know him as your friend. Hallelujah. Amen. His <laughs> in the New Testament, in the book of John, Jesus said it like this. I I just love this. John 15, verse 9. He says, Jesus said this, As the Father has loved me, so I love you. You know, and God is one. You know, he's Jesus. He's he's the Son. He's the Father. He's the Holy Spirit. So what he's saying is, is, As the Father has loved me, I have loved you. See, None of us doubt or question that God the Father loves the Lord Jesus, his only begotten son, right? But where our question comes in is, does he love me? How could he love me? Does he love me? Jesus said, Jesus declared, as the Father loves me, so I love you. So we know that Jesus loves us. But see, God is, he's one, he's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you could say, you could really take this scripture and say like this. As the Father has loved me, so he loves you. But actually, if you just go to John 17, he says that. In John 17, verse 20 and 23, Jesus was praying for you. Did you know that Jesus prayed for you? Jesus actually prayed for everyone in this room, each of us personally. Because he says, I do not pray for these alone. He, he was praying for the people that were there when he was praying. He prayed for them. And then he said in verse 17, I do not pray for these alone, the, the ones that were there, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. How did we believe in God? How did we, we come to know him? Through their word, through the gospel of John, through the gospel of Mark, through the gospel of Matthew. Through the gospel of Luke, through their word, the, the ones he was praying for. He said, I'm not just praying for you guys alone, but I'm praying for everyone that's going to believe in me through your words, through the gospel. So that's you and me, because that's how we all believed. Is he 
Sabranze me de coste vabanze me de caste en lincle de benzi qui tiki ander de betetra. Mara sotre via tradra vedrasa nene matasca da de betete. For hope deferred makes the heart sick, but your hope shall not be deferred longer. And where the heart's been sick, I shall heal it and restore it. For I am the God of all hope. I'm the God of all hope. And I shall fill you with joy and peace in believing. And where it just seems like, Lord, I can't seek you, I can't connect with you right now. Lord said, don't worry about it. Just ask me to seek you. I'll seek you. I'll do it. No condemnation, no bondage, just love. See, I'll, I'll, thank you, Father. Yes, sir, I will. <laughs> yes, yes, Father. Jesus, He. He said, but I also pray for these that will believe me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one with us, that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me, I've given them. Jesus said, Father, the manifest presence, the glory that you've given me, that, that's the presence of the Holy Spirit, that power, that anointing, that love, that glory, the presence of God that Jesus had with him. He said, I've given it to them. That they may be one just as we are one, I and them and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one. And listen to this, the very last, last of it. That the world may know that you've sent me and have loved them. Listen to what Jesus said. I pray that they will know that you have loved them as you have loved me. Wow. So we don't doubt that he loves Jesus, but can Jesus lie? Hmm? These, these words are written in red. Do you know what that means? That means Jesus said these words. You know, this is, I have really deep theology. My theology is the red letters win. If, if I've got a conflict with the black letters that Paul or Peter said, with the words that Jesus said, I'm just going to let Jesus' words carry the day for me. I mean, there's a way to, to rightly divide all of, it, all of it. But see, the red letters win. Can Jesus lie? See, the Bible is God speaking to you. And, and, and he said, <laughs> Father, he prayed for you and me that we would know, we would know that he has loved us as he has loved me, Jesus said. Do you think that God answered Jesus' prayers? Did the Father answer Jesus' prayers? Anybody doubt that Jesus didn't get his prayers answered? God answered these prayers. This is what it's all about. <laughs> Listen to this. The, the Passion Translation says it this way. For they will see that you love each one of them with the same passionate love that you have for me. Amen. In John 16, verse 27, it says, For the Father himself loves you. For the Father himself, the Father himself loves you. Just put your name there. What is your name, my dear? Alexia. Alexia. For as the Father has loved me, Jesus says, he loves you, Alexia. The Father himself loves you, Alexia. With the same, pa what's your name, brother? Francisco. With the same passionate love that the Father loves me, Jesus says, Francisco, he loves you. Amen. Hmm? Amen. <laughs> yes. 
The Father himself loves you because you've loved me and have believed that I came from God. Listen to this, the Passion Translation. For the Father tenderly loves you. Tenderly. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. It says that hope does not disappoint us because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost who was given to us. God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Now see, for many, many years, I only understood that one way. I only understood that I had the ability to because God had put that love in me, his nature and his love in me for others. And that's true. But see, I believe this is the greatest ministry of the Holy Spirit to me and to you is that he comes, and what does he come to do? He comes to pour the love of God for you into you. But he comes... To pour your name is Teresa. Yeah. Into you, Teresa. And it says our hope disappoints because the love of God is poured into our heart by the Holy Spirit. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, Proverbs 13 says. But but listen to this. It says in Romans 15, 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in your believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know what hope is? It is a very confident, sure expectation of a positive change. Hope is a confident, sure expectation of a positive change. Something good is going to happen. God's going to work it for good. God's going to turn it around. God's going to, what the devil tried to destroy me with and, and, and take me out with and, 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 and cause me so much misery and pain with, God is going to turn that into something awesome. Something good's coming. That's hope. It's a, it's a vision of, of a positive change, a, a, a better outcome. Um, and let me say this. Any area of your life where you have lost hope is an area where you have begun to believe a lie of the devil and that he's trying to build a stronghold. Oh, my goodness. When I heard that, that set me free. I, I was like, wow. Because there were some areas in my life I had become hopeless about. There's some areas I had great hope about, others that I'd become hopeless about. And I heard somebody say that. I said, wow. In other words, if, if I become hopeless because I'm believing a lie, all I got to do is hear the truth and believe that truth. And that truth will destroy that lie. Did you know you don't have to go in many times and, and just preach about the, the lies and the false things that people are believing. You just go preach the truth. Just preach the truth. The truth itself will destroy the lie. He's the spirit of truth. The, I mean, it's like the truth does it, you know. And, but, see, it's his love for you. His love for you. God spoke this to me one time. I was reading this. We've all read this scripture. We've heard revival sermons preached on it time and time again. But in, in the book of Revelation, where the seven letters to the seven churches in, 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 uh, in Revelation 2, verse 4, I don't remember which church this was, but he said, you know, I know your, your faith and your great works and et cetera, et cetera, but I have this one thing against you, that you have left your first love. And at that point when I heard that one time, I heard this sermon, I was in a place where I was, I was cold, I had drawn back, I was distant from God. 
And I said, oh, God, I, I repent. I, you know, I, I don't have that, com that passionate love, that fiery love for you, Jesus, right now like I did. I'm not in a place I was before. And, you know, that, that message helped me. And I, and I just repented. And, I, and I, I said, God, do a work in my heart. I just give you everything again. Just, I lay my life down again. I take up my cross. And, Lord, I just give you me. I give you all that I am. Just take me, Lord, in the, in the place that I am, the condition I'm in. And God... But then one day I read that and I saw it another way. And I said, oh. Oh. You left your first love. And then I remembered the scripture. For we love God because he first loved us. And see, sometimes we leave his love for us. We, we get away from his love for us. That's the first love. We love him because he first loved us. If you, if you want to come back to your first love, you've got to come back to the love that he has for you. Amen. And don't, don't come with any motive that you're going to serve him better or do more or that you're even going to love him more. Just come to receive that love. And I tell you, as he ministers that love to you and fills you with that love, you'll love him. You'll love his people. You'll love the people that don't even know him. Because you'll be filled with that love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we, you know, we get the cart before the horse. We, we, <laughs> we're trying to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. But we're, we're not allowing the Lord to do what he really, really wants to do. It's easy. The, the Lord spoke this to me. Jesus said, my, my burden is light. And my yoke is easy. And he said, Charlie, if the Christian life is not light and easy, and he said if the ministry is not light and easy, there's something wrong. That should be a red flag to you because you're not doing it in my love and in my power and in my strength. You've gotten over and doing it, striving in your own ability, striving in your own, trying to make it happen. Whether it's walking the walk or, you know, what I'm saying. Because, see, it's light and it's easy. And, and tell you what, when you just... Set your heart on one course, on one direction. I'm going to let God love me. I'm going to let him love me. And I'm going to experience that love. I've got to have it. I, I don't, there's no other way for me. Um, yes, sir, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> yes, sir. Let me find this scripture right here. First hmm. John chapter 2, verse 15. We've all heard this one before. Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Did you notice what it says? The love of, of the Father is not in him. See, we read that and we'll, we'll read it like this. Do not love the world or the things of this world. If anyone loves the world, the love for the Father is not in them. No. If you still love the world and the things of the world, the love of the Father, the love that he has for you is not full in you. You need to let him love you more. Because I'll tell you what, he'll love the world out of you. He'll love, he'll, he'll love hell right out of you. He will. I, I love Pastor Jimmy. He, he pastored in Canton, Texas for many years. Oh, 30 years or 26 and a half. And uh, I met him as a very young minister, and he just loved on me and encouraged me and helped me. And, and, um, and I can say this. If, if I saw anybody that ever exhibited the love of God and, and just was just bubbling with it, just all over them and emanating out of them, you, Pastor Jimmy. And, people, and he, like you, Pastor Brad, he not only loved the people in his congregation, he just loved people in Canton. God sent him there to love the people of Canton. And he loved everybody. And known for that. that 
Amen? Um, but I'll guarantee you, this is a man who's let God love him and love him well, and you're still letting him love you. <laughs> the, that's the key. That's the secret. Because his loving kindness is better than life, like David said, right? Life is good, but his loving kindness, oh my goodness. When you start, you know, you just have those encounters with his love. I mean, like the song says, the things of this world grow strangely dim. Amen? They lose attraction. It's just like nothing can compare. It's just his love eclipses that. The light of his love eclipses that. Yes, sir. So see, God is love. So what God will do with you is he knows your love language, okay? So if you're somebody that needs a lot of encouragement and words of affirmation, God will, God will speak to you. He'll talk to you, and it'll always be encouraging things. I'm a words of affirmation guy. God, the way that God corrects me is a little different. When I sit down, he always says, Charlie, I love you. God for me, you know, you're doing, you know, he really encourages me. He affirms me. And he corrects me very lovingly. Yeah? Because if your words, of, if, if love it looks like words to you, it's not sticks and stones can break my bones and words will never hurt me. It's sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will just kill me. <laughs> And so, and so the Lord, the Holy Spirit, will he'll, he'll work with you another way. And the other thing is, is God just touches me like all over me. I mean, tangibly feel him on my body, just all over me. Why? Because I'm a physical touch. So he physically touches me. Now, see, there's some things that you have to understand is that not everybody's like that. You're not maybe like that. So you're like, well... God, why is that person, why are they always getting touched like that and having that encounter and all of that? And, and I never have that. Well, probably because you, you don't need love like that so much. You need it another way. See, you may need love by somebody giving you a gift. And you'll watch this. I've seen this happen. And, and this is, there'll be people, God's kids, members of the church, and someone is always blessing them. Someone's always giving them something. And it blesses them so much. God's touching somebody's heart to give them money or to get, buy them something, do this for them. You know, buy them something, give them gifts, and they get gifts all the time. You know why? You'll find out if you ask them. Their, their, their love language is gifts, and God knows that. So he touches somebody to give to them, and it's usually an answer to their prayer. God spoke this to me one time. He said, Charlie, I could have set it up any way I wanted to set it up. But he said, what I do is I touch the hearts of my children to give to my children and I defer the joy of giving to them. So when you, when you hear my heart and you give to them, you get the joy of giving and giving love that way. And then they get to receive that love. But they know that it came from me. See? Other people, somebody's always doing something for them. Somebody's coming over and cutting their grass. Somebody's coming over and helping them. Somebody's just serving them. And there's people, that's how you love people. You serve people. And, and, and you love to do that. You love to love people like that. And there's people that need love like that. And that's why it's, that's, why that's happening. It's, it's because that's the way they need God to love them. And then other people, it's just they have these encounters with God and, and this intimate thing with God, and, and it's his attention. It's his quality time. When, my, when we had little bitty kids... My wife, Julie, her love language was quality time and acts of service. I didn't know that. So I was going to J.C. Penney, going to Dillard's, going to uh, Macy's and buying her clothes and buying her stuff and buying her gifts because I'm a giver. I give love that way. Didn't mean a hill of beans to her. And then I found out one day what really makes her feel love is would take her away from the kids, go have breakfast with her, buy her breakfast, she don't have to cook it, and sit there and give her my attention, my quality time. And you know, quality time's not sitting on the couch flipping the remote. Quality time's not sitting there reading the newspaper. 
And it's not even that, because back then I was practicing law, so I'd be sitting there in the booth at the restaurant, and I'm running those lawsuits in my mind trying to solve those. And, she, and of course, she's a woman. She knows that. She said, where are you? Where did you go? Where did you go? Are you going to come back? I, you know, she wanted that quality time. And so after our kids left and we were up on the mission field in Columbia, uh, the, we were having a little conflict, you know, you, you you always have a little conflict in marriage from time to time. And I was like, honey, what is going on? I, man, I'm, I'm cooking for you. I'm taking you out. We're spending more time together than we've ever spent in our life. I said, I am totally, I know that I am meeting your love language. I am meeting your love language. And she said, oh, well, she said, Charlie, my love language has changed. <laughs> I said, are you serious? She said, yes. And she said, I'm, to she said, I'm dead serious. It has changed. I said, well, what happened? She said, what is it? I said, what is it? She says, well, it's gifts now. I'm like, oh, man, I was saving so much money, I'm going to have to go back to spending money. So I, I buy her gifts now. See, it's like that. God knows you. God wired you. He made you. He, he said you're, you're beautifully and fearfully and wonderfully made. He, he made you to be you. He likes you. He don't want you to be somebody else. He wants you to be the unique one that you are, man. That's what he... And he wants you to be strong and, 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 and um, encouraged about that and embrace that. And um, I'm sorry, brother. I know I'm wandering for the camera. I, and I, everybody online, please forgive me. I'm sorry about that. But um, um, see, we say things like this. God said, I heard God say. But see, God doesn't communicate to everybody like that. Some people, yes, he communicates to them audibly. They hear the voice of God in their heart and in their spirit. But other people are very visual. So when God communicates with them, he just shows them stuff all the time. And it's, it's legit. It's valid. They just see things. They see pictures and images. And, and, and that's God. Other people, they have a, they have a brilliant mind. And so the way God communicates with them is he inspires their thoughts. So they get in the presence of God and they start getting all this revelation, all these downloads, all these thoughts. You're not just thinking that. That's God speaking to you. And many times they're like, well, why doesn't God ever touch me like that? Why don't I ever, you know, some people, God communicates to them through feeling. Like all of those words of knowledge, I felt all of those in my body. And that's a very common way the word of knowledge flows. Two, maybe two of them I heard. Because I'm audile or I'm a feeler. So I, I feel it, you know, in my body. And then the same thing in the atmosphere. I feel what's in the atmosphere. That can be tough. That can be a struggle because, you know, when you're a feeler, you feel all the stuff in the atmosphere, and then the devil say, that's you. No, it's not you. That's just what's in the atmosphere. And... Once you know that, then you can change the atmosphere because we're not thermometers. We're thermostats, right? A thermometer can only measure the atmosphere, but a, but a thermostat measures it and then releases the change. We can release the Spirit of God out of us to change the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. And we're changing the atmosphere in Palestine. Amen. You sure are. So, see, if you steward... The way that God loves you and communicates with you and be thankful for it. Like, if you're like, oh, thank you, God, that you inspire my thoughts, that you talk to me like that through my thoughts, that that's the way you communicate with me, that's the way you made me. Then if you'll be grateful and steward that, a lot of times he'll open you up to more things. And then he'll begin doing, communicating to you. Otherwise, some people are very intuitive. You know, most all mamas, most all women have levels of intuition tuition very intuitive usually more than a man but some i mean are super intuitive people that are intuitive i mean you just know god inspires your intuition you know that you know that you know you don't know how you know but you know right and you know so the thing is this is that that um Yes, there's intuition where you know things about your children and know things about your, your husband or your wife and know things about friends and things. But then there's the times when the Holy Spirit inspires that intuition. 
there's the common level of natural intuition, you could say, but then there's the, the Holy Spirit inspires that. And I'm getting off just a little bit, but it kind of fits in that the Lord knows you so well. He knows you so well. And He likes you. You have to understand this. Not only does He love you, He likes you. He likes to be with you. You make Him smile when you come. He's like, man, go ahead, make my day. Come, come here and be with me. He loves you. He likes you. He likes what He created. He likes who He's made you to be. He, he knows who you are. He knows that born-again child of God that you are. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close. We go on. I mean, this is a vein of gold. You get into this, you can't, you can't ever mine it all out. But anybody got a pair of sunglasses? Okay. That'd, that'd be all right. I'll look like Elton John or something for a minute. <laughs> all right. Man, these are terrible. <laughs> How do you say? <laughs> All right. See, many times we're viewing God the Father through a lens of our earthly father. All right? And so our, our, we're not seeing him clearly. We're seeing him, but it's distorted because the only thing we know about a father is what we experience from our earthly father. And we project that onto God. But see, the Lord, He wants to strip that off. And I believe He stripped some of that off last night. He wants to strip that off. So that you see Him clearly. He wants to give you 20 20 on who He is. See, He doesn't want to know, He doesn't want you to know about Him secondhand. He wants you to know him firsthand for yourself. Not what someone else says who he is, but who you know he is because you've been with him. And see, he'll never abandon you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll always provide for you. He'll always protect you. He'll, he'll be like in your corner, like cheering you on. He'll be, you know, maybe, you know, my, I, look, 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 I'll just talk about myself for a second. My dad was an amazing provider, all right? And so we always had plenty. God, my dad worked hard. He first man in our family that ever got an education, came, came off the farm and through the GI Bill got an education, and he provided well for us, and he worked hard. And, and that's what he knew to do. And he was phenomenal in that area. But, you know, a father is also a protector. But he, he was just very, with us, he gave us so much freedom. He just didn't watch over us. He just probably trusted, he did trust us too much. And, and so we got into problems and we got into trouble. And then my, my I can, I don't ever remember my dad ever coming to any, any baseball game that I played in or football game or anything that I was ever involved in. He never came. He was always busy. And I remember one time, and this hurt me so much, I was in the seventh grade. And my dad hired a man, or it was a man that actually worked for him, to take me up to Dallas to the amusement park and to see DFW Airport when they were building that. And that man spent the day with me when, it, when I wanted it to be my dad, and it broke my heart. Now, I've totally forgiven my dad. I'm, I'm so thankful for my dad. I'm so thankful for the dad that he was. And, but see, I'm healed and I'm whole, and now God's my dad. See, and, and my dad was good, but he wasn't perfect. And no human father's perfect. All right? And so God can, can be whether, whether whatever was missing with your dad, whatever, whatever, or if you never knew your dad or... Or you know who he is and you knew him for a little while and then he left. God will step in and be your daddy. Or if your daddy, like my daddy, has gone on, he's passed on. He's not here in the world. He's, he's, 
you know, he's died and he's gone to heaven. God will be your dad. And sometimes, let me tell you something, it's a little harder for God to be your dad when your earthly dad is still here, you know? Um, my niece came to live with us, and, and her daddy was an addict. And, and she lived with us from age 12 till 20s, in her 20s. And we raised her, you know, as an adolescent, a teenager. And, you know, I provided for her. I, I protected her and I provided for her. I, you know, educated her, kept her fed, kept her clothed, and, 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 and treated her just like one of my kids. But she could never accept me in the role of a father. I was her uncle, and it's my wife's niece. Did what I could. And it, it would just frustrate me. It would just, because every once in a great while, maybe once a year, she gets a little, maybe her daddy was in jail or something, she'd get a letter from him. And oh, it just like, you know. Or he maybe sent her 25 or 50 bucks, you know. And I'm thinking, my goodness, man, I'm, you know, we're there for you every Christmas, every birthday, you know. And it would, it, but I didn't understand what I understand now, you know. And she wanted that love from her daddy. That's just natural. And that's painful. But I saw that girl, God, take her through a process. And she is so healed and so whole now. I mean, her, both her mother and her father abandoned her. They both went to prison because of, you know, drug addiction and crimes. And that's tough. It's tough when you're 12. That's, you know, and, and, and that happened, you know, they... It was from, for her, it was from two years old on. First, her grandmother adopted her, and she was grandmother until she became an adolescent, and then that wasn't working well, so she came to live with us. And um, abandonment is a King Kong issue. It's a big, big deal. And until... You let God's love heal you of abandonment. But many times you'll destroy, you'll just self-destruct relationships because you're so f afraid that someone will abandon you and, and you hold on too tight or you do things to, to try to, you know, and it, people can't handle the pressure and, and the, the control or the whatever. But once you get healed of that, you're safe and secure. And only God can do that. And I, and I knew, I finally figured out she's struggling with a great issue of abandonment. And, I, and all I could do was pray and try to address it as much as I could. But I watched God heal her completely of abandonment. And she has a wonderful marriage. She has a wonderful husband. She's a wonderful mom. They're just wonderful parents. And they're, they're just doing great because of God's love. And God is her daddy, not just her father. Her daddy, 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 daddy. And I'm so happy because, see, that's my ultimate goal because I'm not going to be here forever. I want all of my kids to know God as their daddy. I, want, I, want, I mean, I want them to know me as daddy as long as I'm going to be here, but I want them to know God as their daddy. Amen? Amen. Yes. And that's, that's ministering in Colombia, South America, it is, it is a very fatherless nation. And... Uh, that's the root of the, the problem is abandonment by fathers and I was preaching in a city one time and I heard this phrase God just spoke to me he said I want sons and daughters not slaves and servants I want sons and daughters not slaves and servants and he said he gave me that scripture he gave me two scriptures Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. And then he gave me the scripture where Jesus said, Unless a kernel of wheat or a kernel of corn falls down into the ground, it abides alone. But if it falls into the ground and it dies, then it comes back to life and it produces much fruit. You know, when you, when you plant a seed in the ground, the husk, it rots and the life on the inside of that seed, it germinates. The moisture hits it, the, the nutrients hit it the ground, and it springs up. But when it springs up, what's it do? It, it produces multiplied hundreds of that one seed. And God said, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. He said, Charlie, I wrote that. That's my principle. And he said, 
Whatever I sow, I reap. What did God sow? When he gave Jesus, what did he sow? A servant? No. Did he sow a slave? No. He sowed a son. What, so what's his harvest? What's, he, what's his ultimate goal? What's, what, what's the whole reason he gave Jesus? He wants you to be sons. And it's interesting, he's in, in, first, in, in, in John chapter, I guess it's 1 verse 12, he says, For as many as believed in me, I gave them the power to become the sons of God. He doesn't say sons and daughters. That's very interesting to me. Why? I'll tell you why. Just like he says, you know, Pastor Brad's a very macho guy. This man's a very macho guy. You, you guys are pretty macho, you know, men. But he calls all of us and all the women in this room the bride of Christ. And then he says all of the, it's like the same, the same kind of neutral. He says, everybody believes in me as a son. Why? Because in the time that that was written, sons had more rights than daughters. They inherited more. They had a different position. And, you know, in that culture, women viewed as they are today. And, and so why does he use that? It's called all the men and the women the bride and all the men and the women's sons. Because he wants you to know that in Jesus Christ, there is no limit. There's no barriers. There's no social barrier. There's no economic barrier. There's no, there's no education barrier. There's no uh, ethnic barrier. There's no gender barrier. We all are loved by him intimate his ability to make you feel and I believe it's true that you're his favorite and I, and I did this time together go out to dinner I, one of them I took to the symphony because he really loved music and all of that and uh, one of them was fishing trip I'd say this, don't tell your brother, don't tell your brothers or your sisters, but you're my favorite. <laughs> but that's true, because each of them are, because each one of them are unique. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm convinced If we will allow the Lord to love us, if we'll just simply receive that love, it will heal us and make us whole. And it will motivate us and bring us up to a level to live for Him, like Him, in Him. And it will not be a... It will not be out of duty. It will not be out of service. It's like this. My, my youngest son, Seth, when he turned 18, after he finished school, he traveled with me in the ministry for a year. All right? He's the baby son. You know, he's my son, right? When it got time for us to work, he served me. He served my ministry. He served me. He helped me. Never, ever did I think of him as my servant. All I could think of him was as my son. But you know what? As we traveled, and we were in hotels together, on airplanes together, in cars together, in churches together, in different nations together. My friends. Because... Everything that my father's doing, I show it to you. That's pretty huge. God wants you to be, number one, his son, his daughter. And then he wants you to be his friend. And then, sir, but you know, sometimes,
times and I don't know if my mic's So tonight, as we're finishing up, I want you just to open your heart for a moment. I want Jessica to sing just a little bit more. And I do not want you to sing right now because you can't pour water out of a glass and pour water into a glass at the same time. We've ministered to the Lord, but now he wants to minister to us. And he he wants you to receive. He wants you to get into a receiving mode. And, and I believe he's going to speak to some people. He's going to touch other people. He's going to love you the way you need to be loved. So, see, God created you for his presence. And just like a sponge is created for water, God created your spirit, your soul, and your body for his presence, for his love. And when a, when a sponge gets close to the water... It actually, the slightest touch of the water, the sponge will begin to pull the water into itself and absorb it until it's just can't take anymore. And so would you simply relax for a moment and just just let the Lord love you. Let him, let him touch you. Let him, let him love you the way that you need to be loved tonight. Let him communicate to you. Just receive his love. Receive the touch of God. stand tonight yes Jesus mm. Philippians 4 13 powerful scripture reminds us just of how there's accomplishment that's capable in Christ
strengthening that's been taking place. I see just this, this coming of age, this growth spiritually inside of every single one of you that's here tonight. Where God is just starting to put the new sinews inside of you and those muscles are starting to stretch and grow spiritually inside your heart. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say that with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That even means that you can come lay some things down at an altar. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If your marriage is in trouble, you can give it to God. Say it with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you're struggling with relationships at work or in school, I see that in school. There's some problems. There's some stuff going on. Say it with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, you can. Because God can. Because God wants to. Because God is more than able. Amen. Maybe it's a ministry that you want to see happen in your life. You want to see God save people. It's possible possible through us as God strengthens us. Amen. Hallelujah. Every body builder that's ever been on the face of the earth has to start somewhere. You just don't walk up to a bar and lift 400 pounds. But you have to start somewhere and knowing that God is more than able to do it through you is your start. He does the heavy lifting for us. Somebody say amen to that. I just want to take some time, and these, these altars are open. I'm going to ask Charlie and Aaron. I'm going to ask Teresa to come up to the front. We want to, we want to pray with you tonight. We want people to lay hands on you. If you're struggling with something in your life, man, this is your moment. This is God's moment with you to see that thing change, that thing be given over, that thing to be taken, that thing to be developed, that thing to be touched in your life. This is it. This is the power of God moment for you. So if you need prayer tonight for anything that you're walking through, come. Come on to the front. It's time. It's been time. Amen. Come on. Any one of us that need prayer, if you need prayer for something, God says, I want to do this through you. I want to help you. I want to motivate you. I want to encourage you. I want to strengthen you. I want to give you more capacity for what you're walking through. I want to honor you. I want to bless you. I want to give you strength to overcome. If there's some flesh things you're still dealing with in your life, God says, I'm more than able to help you. I'm your encourager. I'm your hope and glory. I am faithful. Just like what was preached tonight, God is consistent every single time that we're not. He fills in all the gaps for us. Amen? Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Just minister to the people. The sweet presence of God has been here all night long. And as we said at the beginning, you just got to take this step to get whatever it is you need to get. Amen. If real change is going to come, you got to go get change. You got to ask for it. You got to walk into it. Amen. And let God speak to your life. Yes, amen. Just keep singing that song. We just keep singing that song. As the presence of the Lord starts to minister to you, just come. Get prayed for tonight. Get ministered to in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Thank you for that spirit of conviction, Father, that's on our hearts that's here in this room. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. God is going to change the way of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. He's going to change it. He's going to do something great through you in your life. It's through you that God wants to do these things. 
it's through you that he wants to give you strength. All things are possible through Christ who gives us strength. Yes, Jesus.